Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, today we will learn how to use a height map in Geometry Node. To do this, we need a black and white image that is called a height map. To create this, first go to this website and download your desired map. The website link is in the video description below. On this website, zoom in on the map you want. I want to work on a map of Afghanistan in this video and zoom in on Afghanistan. Then, in the menu, enable the map line option and click on the export button. Then, disable the map line option and click on the export button again. Now we have two images one with map line and one without map line. Both of these images should be imported into Adobe Photoshop. Copy the image with the map line and paste it onto the image without the map line. Make sure the images are aligned exactly. Now, I will close this image that we don't need. Create a new layer with a bright color and place it below the top layer. And then, zoom the document to delete around the map. Then, use the magic eraser tool to remove the background around the top layer. Change the brush to eraser tools. Make sure that the areas around the map are properly cleared, as our focus will be on these pixels. While the top layer is selected, hold the control key on your keyboard and click on the template button in the layer palette to select this layer. Hide this layer and select the bottom layer and unhide it. Now, invers the selection and press the delete key on your keyboard to remove the background around the original layer. Delete both top layers that are no longer needed. Crop the document to remove any unnecessary space. And from the menu, Camera Raw Filter options adjust the contrast of the image slightly. Save the image in the PNG format and open Blender. Delete the cube and add a plane instead. In edit mode, scale the plane to match the image that we will import from Photoshop later. Now, split the viewport window into two parts. The new window should be changed to geometry nod. While the plane is selected in the viewport, click on the new button in geometry node to create a geometry node modifier on the plane. Now, you will see that the node group input and output have been created. Add the distribute on face node. This node displays a series of points on the object, which we can later replace our desired objects with these points. Add an image texture node and connect the vector socket to the input group. Then, go to the modifier tab and select UV map from the vector dropdown. Next, Add a set position node and connect the color socket from the image texture to the offset socket of the set position node. Look at the plane in edit mode. Open the height map in the image texture. To ensure the height map works correctly, add a vector math node after the image texture node, set the Z vector to 0.5 and change the operation to multiply. Check the plane in the viewport. Increase the density to 60,000 and check the plane. This can make the object heavy in the viewport. To prevent the object from being too heavy, add two nodes before the distribute points on faces node. Add the as viewport and map range nodes before the nodes previously mentioned.
Now, reduce the density to 10 and set the minimum value in the map range node to 60,000 and the maximum value to 200 or higher lower as needed. The maximum value determines how the object is displayed in the viewport, helping to keep the project lightweight. The minimum value is used for the final output or result. Connect the nodes and adjust the maximum value according to your preference. Adjust the maximum value in the map range node and observe the results in the viewport. By increasing or decreasing this value, you can control the appearance and density of the points, allowing you to find the optimal setting for your project. The points around the map are not actually part of the image. To remove these points, use the Delete Geometry node. Add a Math node after the Image Texture node, and also add a Random node to randomize the placement of the points. After the Distribute Points on Faces node, add the Delete Geometry node, and then connect the Math node to the Delete Geometry node. Connect the Image Texture node to the Math node, set the Math node to less than and the threshold to the smallest possible value. Use the Random node to randomize the points. Adjust the maximum value in the Random node to achieve the desired result. By increasing or decreasing this value, you can control the random distribution of points, fine-tuning the appearance until you're satisfied with the outcome. Now, add the Instance on Points node after the Set Position node to instance your object on the points. Add a cube in the viewport and move it a few units along the x-axis. In Edit mode, scale it down along the x and y axes, then move it down by one unit along the z axis. Next, from the Outliner window, Click and drag the cube with the left mouse button into the Geometry Nodes window. Then, connect the Geometry Socket from the cube to the Instance Socket on the Instance on Points node. To align the object at the bottom, we need a Vector Math node. I will duplicate this node and connect it to the Scale Socket of the Instance on Points node. Set the Vector Math operation to add and change the X, Y, and Z vectors to 0.03. We can see that our map is mirrored. Now, go to the viewport, switch to edit mode, and move the bottom vertices of the cube up by one unit. Next, Add a Material node after the Instance on Points node and select the existing material. Change the View mode from Solid to Rendered and switch the Render Engine from Eveve to Cycles. Under the Film section, enable Transparent. In the World tab, select Sky Texture, set the Strength to 0.3 and the Sun Size to 30. Adjust the focal length of the camera to 150 in both settings, and position the camera appropriately. Then, switch the timeline panel to the shader editor and add the necessary nodes. First, add an Object Info node, then a separate XYZ node, and finally, a Color Ramp node. Connect all three nodes together and adjust the Color Ramp node as shown in the video. The Object Info node in Blender's Shader Editor provides information about 3D objects. This node allows you to add various object attributes, such as color, position, and scale, to shaders for use in material creation. The separate XYZ node in Blender's Shader Editor takes information from the Object Info node and allows you to pass an object's position and coordinates in 3D space to shaders. This node outputs the X, Y, and Z coordinates directly, which can be used to create various effects in materials. How the Color Ramp node works 
The color ramp node creates an editable gradient. By placing the separate XYZ node before it, the coordinates of the object are used as input for the color ramp. The color ramp can then determine the object's color based on these coordinates. For example, you can set a color gradient from blue to red in the color ramp. If this node is placed after the separate XYZ node, objects on the left side of the scene will appear blue, while objects on the right side will appear red. This allows designers to create dynamic and varied colors based on the positions of objects. Now, in the Render tab, under the Render section, reduce the max samples to 200. To increase the density of the points on the map, decrease the max value in the Random node. This will reduce the distance between points and increase the number of points. Increase the height of the points using the Vector Math node. In Edit mode, Make the top part of the cube narrower. In the map range node, increase the to minimum value to 80,000. Adjust the X, Y and Z values as needed to achieve the desired result. There's a small issue that can be easily fixed. At the highest point of the map, the objects are aligned. Duplicate the random node and set the max value to 1. Add a separate XYZ node, followed by a combined XYZ node. Connect the output of the random node to the inputs of the separate XYZ node, then connect the outputs to the inputs of the combine XYZ node. Finally, connect the combine XYZ output to the vector input of the vector math node. Check the height of the map and do a test render. My dear friends, that was today's video. Thank you so much for joining me, I'm really happy to have you all with me on this channel and I appreciate that you watch my videos, it gives me the energy to make better and more videos. Please stay tuned for the next video, and goodbye for now.